Hi, I'm Sarah Hart from Drive Heart, and today we're going to be talking about dual carriageways. We're going to cover five key points. We're going to talk about what they are. We're going to talk about speed, lanes, overtaking, and joining and leaving. So those are five key areas that learners can find uh, challenging when they first start on dual carriageways. So let's talk about what it is. Most people uh, think that a dual carriageway is any road that has two lanes. Actually, that's not quite right. A dual carriageway is a road that has a physical separation between the two, two rows of traffic. So it can have one lane going each way, but if it's got a physical separation, then that is classed as a dual carriageway. Quite often parents ask, can I drive on a dual carriageway with my child? Yes, you can, um, as long as, of course, you're displaying L plates and your car is insured um, and you meet the criteria of a supervising driver. So the rules actually for dual carriageways are no different than any other road apart from motorways. And we'll come on to that in another podcast. Let's talk about speed. Now, when you come onto a dual carriageway with your learner, it might be the first time that they are able to travel up to 70 miles an hour. So if you see a national speed limit on a dual carriageway, it will be 70. But that's not to say that they're always 70. Of course, they might be restricted. You can get dual carriageway that is as low as 30, 30 miles an hour for various reasons. But let's assume that they have got a national speed limit, so they're able to travel at 70. So this might be the first time that they've got up into fifth or sixth gear. So they're going to be traveling at speed for the first time. We need to make really sure that they're keeping those hands really steady and gripping that steering wheel, not over tight, but a good firm grip on the steering wheel, keeping it really steady. Because as you as experienced drivers will know, if you move the wheel suddenly at that sort of speed, then it can have disastrous consequences. So planning and anticipation and making sure we look well ahead. And also, uh, we need to make sure we leave a good safe gap between us and the car in front of us. So in a dry, on a dry day, that would be two seconds as a minimum. And on wet roads, we'd leave four seconds gap. Um, So that's that's another speed thing, really. Um, So let's move on to uh, number three which is lanes. Again, it might be the first time that your learner has has driven with multiple lanes. And of course, you've got to explain to them which lane to drive in. Now, a very simple way to think of this is that in England, we drive on the left. So basically, left is our default setting. So we're going to drive on the left unless there's a good reason to be in the right. When might we use the right lane? We might use the right lane to overtake, and we'll come on to that in more detail. We might need to use the right lane on approach to a roundabout because if we're turning right at the roundabout or the lane that we need on approach to the roundabout is the right lane, then clearly we've got to get across. We might need to get across into the right lane to get into a filter lane to cross the dual carriageway. So you've got to remember about the speed and you've got to remember to make sure that you're very aware and that your learner is also extremely aware of what other cars are around them. Because clearly, if you're on the left lane moving across to the right, you've got to make sure that it's safe to do so. So we use our mirror signal maneuver process. So observations are really, really critical. And I'd always recommend that um, you get what we call little blind spot mirrors to put on left and right door mirrors. That will help the, the driver, the learner, actually have a better view of what's around them. But as an instructor and as a supervising driver, it'll actually help you as well to have a look at what's happening. So that's lanes. So let's move on to number four, which is overtaking. Again, it might well be the first time your learner's overtaking. So we need to be very sure that they're clear what's around them, checking those mirrors. Uh, And we'd also say check to your right before moving right. Having checked your rear view mirror and your right door mirror, a check alongside you is recommended. But I would certainly recommend that you don't get your learner to twist their heads and look at their blind spot because that would actually be turning their body uh, and they might at that point turn the wheel inadvertently. You don't want that to be happening. Think about overtaking. Explain to them beforehand that if we're coming up behind a car that's not traveling at the same speed as us, we're going to need to plan really far in advance. So we'd be looking as far ahead as we could, starting to recognize that we're gaining on the vehicle in front of us. And at this stage, you really need to know what's on your right wing. Uh, So you should be planning for your gaps using your mirror signal, position, speed, look routine. 
fifth point is about joining and leaving dual carriageways. I often ask my learners, you know, how do we get from a normal road to a dual carriageway? And they sometimes struggle with that. But of course, there's many ways that we can get from A to B, if you like. It might be that the road we're traveling on just develops into a dual carriageway. And you will always get a big sign saying dual carriageway ahead. That's going to tell you that you're, you're going to be coming onto a dual carriageway. So that's one way of doing it. It might be that it's a basic junction. Maybe you turn left or right and just come onto that dual carriageway. It might be that you dual the carriageway, dual carriageway via a roundabout. But the big one for me and through experience is the big one that the learners perhaps struggle with is using slip roads. So let's talk about a slip road leaving the dual carriageway. If we're traveling at 70 on the dual carriageway and we're going planning on taking the next exit via the slip road, we need to start thinking about our speed. So we obviously need to make sure we're in the left lane. You don't want to be caught napping in the in the outside lane or in the right lane when you're approaching your slip. So plan ahead, get over to the left. Look for your markings um, and mirror signal maneuver off. It's not advisable to brake, to, certainly not heavily, before you are on the slip road, because obviously the cars behind you, if they haven't left that safe gap, you don't want to be braking hard. So save your braking for the slip road. But when you are on the slip road, squeeze those brakes, get that speed off. And again, you know, if you learn, as it might be the first time that they've been traveling at speed and then have to get that speed off. So it's all about employing those brakes, get those brakes on uh, and make sure you get your speed down in order to uh, address the next junction, which may well be a roundabout or it could be the end of the road. So with the off slips, we use them to decrease our speed. So let's go to the on slips, so slip roads that bring you onto the dual carriageway. And this is what sometimes learners can struggle with. So it's really important as we come down that slip road that we build our speed. If you're in the left lane on a slip, stay in the left lane. If you're on the right lane on a slip, stay in the right lane. Don't change lanes. But the really important thing is that we build our speed and get through those gears because we want to be ready to join the dual carriageway building the pace so that it matches the cars that are actually on the dual carriageway. So I always recommend sort of fourth or fifth gear to come onto the end of the slip, using those mirrors to look and see what's happening. And then if you've got that slightly lower gear, maybe fourth gear, you've got the power to accelerate out onto the left lane of the dual carriageway. If you're chugging down the on slip in sixth and you need a bit of power, you're going to struggle to, to get any response to the car if you're already in sixth gear. So keep a slightly lower gear, keep some power in reserve, make those decisions and use the whole length of the slip road to build your speed and to help make, you make your decisions as whether it's safe to go or not. Now, obviously, if it's not safe and you can't get out, you're going to have to stop. But, you know, if you build your speed correctly, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to have to stop at the end of the slip because most people will be leaving a gap. You're going to put a right signal on. People will know you want to come out. Please feel free to contact us. Please, parents, join up with our parents teaching a learner to drive page on Facebook. And of course, subscribe to Drive Zone via the website or Facebook. And of course, as always, feel free to contact me via any medium you like, including the phone. Attached to this podcast, there'll be some useful notes and links. I do hope you found it of use. As always, please feel free to contact us and thank you very much.